Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another Lost in the Pond reaction, and this one is <clears throat> Why Do We Bash Americans? I don't know if this is like from the perspective of why do British people bash Americans? Because obviously, Lost in the Pond or Lawrence is a British guy and he does seem to do British versus um, UK versus US type videos. So I'm going to assume this is from the UK point of British point of view. I'm just going to read this. For as long as I can remember, my British compatriots, not all to be fair, have a tendency to bash Americans as a Brit married to an American and one who has long held a fascination with the country and its people. I can never quite put my finger on this particular brand of prejudice here on my thoughts. All I really see, I always see like sort of things on Twitter. There's always like sort of memes and stuff, which is always fun to see, but like obviously like Americans making fun of British stereotypes, vice versa. But then there is points when I've seen like comments on the YouTube videos where it does get quite like sort of, I guess toxic, is that the right word? Like it just gets quite like, God damn, they really do not get on for some people at least. Again, it's a, it's a minority or it's a, it's a section of Brits or Americans. But in this in this one, we're going to see why Brits or certain Brits think this way. And I mean, yeah, I don't really know what to expect. Maybe he's going to use like examples and stuff. I don't know, but let's just get into this. Maybe it's like through jealousy. Some like patriotic British people are like jealous because England or Britain is no longer the superpower or the the country that's in control of most things and that's the US. Maybe some people look at it like that. I'm one person who doesn't give a damn about that kind of stuff, but there are definitely people out there who do value that kind of that kind of stuff. But yeah, before we get into this quick quick shout out to my Instagram and my Twitter links in the description for those interested in following those. Save my Patreon links were there. <laughs> links were there in for those interested to find that. But yeah, let's just get into this and see what he has to say. running pretending i'm sitting down while running you know it's not a valid form of it <laughs> old school did you make this old school lawrence it's only like two years ago to be fair exercise oh hello uh, guess what i've been doing this week i've been reading twitter it's a big mistake nobody should ever do that but while i was reading twitter twitter's a mess tweet take a look at that <clears throat> an american friend and her husband have reservations an American dinner in Brighton. They were greeted with a sign that said "Love American hops, but hate Americans." What the fuck? So they walked out. I would have to. We'll definitely take it to Russia. What the fuck? See, that's just weird. Again, I don't think there's people who would like go out their way to do this kind of stuff. But at the same time, there probably is. To be honest. Right, and it got me thinking, you know, why do we bash Americans? And I don't I don't mean we as in me and everyone else. And I don't just mean this, you know, politically. There seems to be a tendency toward bashing Americans in general. Now, before I do continue, I should uh, reiterate that, of course, this isn't all British people bashing all Americans all the time. But there is still, nonetheless, this tendency that happens. There. And you wouldn't expect a restaurant uh, to write this about other nations or other nationals from around the world. But somehow it's fair game with Americans. And that's... That is something that I've never understood. Of course, now I understand it even less, having lived in America for 11 years and married to an American who would not take kindly to me saying such a thing. So, you know, I just wanted to give some thought as to why we think it is fair game. In order to do so, we have to look historically at the relationship, the now apparently special relationship between Britain and America. But it's kind of weird because probably the biggest allies in the world, maybe Canada and the US or Canada and the UK, but it's one of the biggest allies or friendships between countries in the world, yet so many people have these kinds of views or whatever. It is a strange one, but again, we're gonna see what he has to say. And I'm interested, man, I'm really interested in seeing what sort of reasons behind it there could and be. And so, you know, I think <coughs> anti-American sentiment, if you want to call it that, among uh, my British compatriots has existed for centuries. I mean, you could go back to the early colonization of uh, what is now the United States. Even after that, take, for example, uh, Samuel Johnson, the uh, the inventor of the original English dictionary in, in Britain. He was the sort of the, uh, the precursor, I suppose, to Noah Webster in that sense. And, you know, he had quite a strong anti-American sentiment to him. He's the very uh, man, in fact, that said, uh, I am willing to love all mankind except 
an American. And that's not all he said. I mean, that's not where it stopped. Wait, he uh, also said by his own choice, this was of somebody who would uh, move to the continent of North America or just the United States in general. Um, by his own choice, he has left a country where he had a vote and little property for another where he has great property, but no vote. And in many ways, that's sort of in line with uh, King George III's idea that as a political entity, America had no hope that it would go nowhere. And of course, then it did. It it, uh, it became independent from the British. You could almost... So it is kind of already the lines I'm thinking. There are people out there who are kind of jealous about the power shift, I guess you could say. And these are obviously people from years, years, like centuries ago. But there's patriots, Brit English patriots, British patriots, who probably have this same kind of mindset of, as these people who've had hundreds of years ago being jealous about the power again. The power argue shift. that that may have led to resentment at least at that very time i think if you were to talk to british people today they may not even cite 1776 as a reason for their resentment against i didn't even know 1776 was really a thing until i started doing these videos obviously obviously i heard i had heard about it mainly through twitter i remember i started using twitter a few years ago and i'd see like sort of it trending or i'd see people posting like memes or whatever but before that, I'd never even, like, looked into it again. I may have heard of it through, like, school and stuff. But I would have never, like, been jealous or thought about it in a way like that. It's, I don't know. There's people out there who genuinely get, like, angered by this. British people who get angered by these kinds of events. Americans should they <laughs> so have that weird. resentment. And uh, that's quite an interesting point, right? <clears throat> so I'm not sure that all prejudice toward Americans today is even tied to history. In fact, to its detriment, it often ignores it. Um, in the case of uh, language, actually, quite often, as I've pointed out before, um, we ignore sort of the historical patterns behind language and how Americanisms came about from Britishisms. You know, I've talked before about the word uh, soccer having been coined, actually, mm -hmm. in England, if you want to talk about uh, lexicon. The, the same is true of certain and spellings of words. Let's, let's look at aluminum. Uh, we say and write al aluminium uh, back in the UK and you say aluminum here. Well, well, aluminum was previously in use in the UK and was debated back and forth between members of the science circle there as to which one we should go with. And oh, then wow. similarly, when we're talking about fun? pronunciation, a lot of Americans have a tendency to drop the H on herb, whereas the British tend to keep it. But that was not always the case. We started out by dropping the H on herb. Oh, because shit. Of the French <laughs> oh, this so just as we do with the words honour and hour and things of that ilk. Uh, but we stopped doing that just because uh, it was becoming quite a class issue. If you were doing that uh, in the UK, you were seen as unintelligent at one point. Um, what? That memo never got uh, spread over oh, wow. here in the United States. So they dropped That's it. Crazy. And we, we ignore that fact uh, when we criticise Americans from a linguistic point of view I and didn't, uh, that's didn't not where it ends you could talk about sort of American stereotypes that have emerged Americans are loud uh, we've talked about this before but of course that is quite specific to s certain things and you know just as it would be in reverse if we were to sort of stereotype my fellow countrymen for having uh, bad teeth because of the uh, depiction in Austin Powers for example not necessarily true of all British people uh, we, we do guide a lot of our things based on stereotypes I'm talking now of course about the present day having talked about uh, the 18th century. But in between that, the relationship between the United States, or at least the political relationship between the United States and Great Britain has changed, and specifically in and around World War II, when we uh, sort of forged the aforementioned special relationship, you could still find quotes such as this, which was actually not by Winston Churchill. It's often said that Winston... Americans will always do the right thing after exhausting all the alternatives. Churchill said it. He did not. There's no evidence for it. But the, the, the quote came out of somewhere. Somebody invented it. And so I think it's kind of a never-ending thing. But the big mm. question is... Why? Why do we bash Americans? We don't do this to uh, people from other predominantly English-speaking countries like Australia or Canada. So we have to look at a couple of things. Um, firstly, America is a big dog in the world. It's the biggest dog, perhaps, in the world. Has been since World War II. We're very familiar with that idea. So in the present day, if we're ignoring history, as some are wont to do, are we simply looking at uh, how America is a big dog and applying envy to that. Let's not forget, Britain 
also thinks of itself as sort of the greatest country in the world. It just uses different yep. terminology. Yeah. You know, it's very proud of what it's achieved, and, and rightfully so. I mean, we gave a lot to the world of music. We've given a lot to the world of technology, to the world of sport, etc., etc. And so when another country comes along and does all these things sort of bigger and grander and is itself <laughs> extremely proud of its efforts... Um, perhaps we look at that um, with a tinge of envy. I'd be lying if I said we didn't. And at the same time, there is respect. I think there is respect back in England for the United States. It's a, it's a weird uh, sort of back and forth, a Jekyll and Hyde personality. That we I kind of know what he means, Jekyll and Hyde personality. I know what he says in there as well. But um, I guess when I was younger, maybe it's one of those things when you're younger, you just sort of feel like that. But nowadays, I'm just sort of thinking like all of these creations that we're using nowadays, again, not everything from the US, but other... In, um, powerful countries I'm, I don't know how people can sort of look like, and be jealous of countries or like hate other countries because of them inventing things or them sort of hold, just pulling the strings in terms of like with the US for example you can see their power through how films, like a lot of the films are produced from the US or actors are produced from the US, a lot of the celebrities are from there a lot of the music nowadays is from the US but I mean I'm not complaining, man. I enjoy Netflix series. I enjoy films. I enjoy US music. I enjoy the inventions. I enjoy using Facebook. Not Facebook. I hate Facebook. Fuck you for making Facebook. <laughs> but um, the YouTube and all this kind of stuff. Xbox? Is Xbox? Isn't that from like Seattle? Because it's Microsoft. Right? I don't fucking know. All these things, though. There's people who like who will be jealous, but then they'll have all these different things. And it's just like... Yeah, man. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. But it's just... I don't have that point of view at all, man. I don't. I don't get jealous of another country, or hate another country because they've advanced technology or whatever. I'm just thankful for it, man. Honestly, and I think most people should be. A lot of people definitely are, and a lot of people aren't like that. But there are people out there who, we have like you said, are jealous or. Whatever it is, America. But some other things, you know, through television and through media, we are granted or rather given um, an idea of what Americans are like. So we'll more than occasionally see news stories. Simpsons. <laughs> oh, it's talking about news stories, stories. Like this one. Florida man calls 911 over missing bear so many times. He gets and we see busted. news reports like this, which is Florida are very man. isolated, but nonetheless very <laughs> eye-catching and loud news reports. We we have this tendency to assume, I think, through the frequency of it, that all Americans are like this, when in fact, uh, through my own experience, I've found it to be not the case at all. You know, I think most Americans that I interact with, while just like everyone else in the world, may have their own neuroses that are unique to themselves and things of that nature, mostly aren't committing very bad bizarre crimes in Florida. I think that, you know, partly when we want to talk about British attitudes toward America, um, you have to remember that, uh, that Britain just likes to moan. I mean, we do. We're, we're a nation of moaners. I'm, a na I'm not a nation, but I am a moaner uh, by nature because of, I think, my upbringing. But I, I tend to reserve that for things like the weather or the food that I'm about to eat tonight. It's not usually about a group of people from a nation because let's remember that America is such a di diverse nation that how could you really uh, pigeonhole everybody into the same category? It, it can't be done. To that extent, it is impossible, I think, to bash Americans. You could bash a particular American for something terrible that uh, he or she did, but to, to do it uh, uh, to a whole nation of people is, is very short-sighted in my view. But don't feel too bad about that, America, because we don't just reserve it for you. We do something very similar to the French and for similar reasons as well. Uh, both. I don't understand this either. I have nothing against French people or, the, or France. Like, I don't understand this. I don't understand how, like, why these are things. I, maybe it's just my generation isn't the same, but... Yeah, I don't sort of know the French sort of rivalry or whatever it is. Linguistically either. based and also imperially based, historically speaking. So, you know, when I see a tweet like that that I showed here at the beginning of the video, I almost wish I could encapsulate all of these thoughts into one video and reply to that tweet with said video. And now I can. I win. <laughs> And so that is why we slash they slash the British don't slash the British. It's not the Revolutionary War. That's why the British bash Americans. Thanks for watching. Shout out once again, man. Another oh shit, just did that. Another banger of a video, and it's interesting to see these perspectives. And now I want to see some of the comments to see what some Brits or Americans have to say. A video about Americans that isn't tearing us down. What the hell is this? Twi Twilight Zone music.
Our only that is foreigners calling us ignorant to the world when they're solely listening to their stereotypical notions of judging all of us. United States, first of all. <laughs> I always wonder about that because in America we don't bash the British. I, I lived in the UK for seven years. When people found out I was in the States, they would inform me how the States were messed up, found out most of them had never spent a day in the US. I worked for a British company um, and when we got July 4th off, I, and I joked about the revolution, no one laughed, not home office. I keep telling you Justin Bieber's Canadian. Florida man isn't really an American, he's something else entirely, something much worse. I've learned about this the hard way. Brit Britain is like the father and America is a son that will never get his father's complete approval. I say we learn Florida to Europe and see how they handle it. <laughs> Just load it for a year and see how we do. As they said in elementary, they hate us because they ain't us. <clears throat> Look, if this is about the tea thing, we wouldn't have dumped your tea. It hadn't if you hadn't raised taxes. <laughs> Fair point. I'm not gonna lie, the tea does bang, man. Have any of you tried matcha tea or green tea? Oh my days! With a bit of honey, fuck me. I need some more of that now. Clears my throat. Good thing for the morning. Gets you awake, mate. If you've not tried matcha tea, gotta try it. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy this. Shout out Lost in the Pond. Subscribe to me if you haven't already. Subscribe to me too, I'd appreciate it. And yeah, next time, like, subscribe. Peace.